been head of Berry College for a long time and running a very successful program there. And let me hand over to him to chat to you a bit about what the high school will be offering. David. Morning, everybody. It's great to see so many of you here. Um, I want to just tell you a bit about the Cambridge system um, in order to kind of demystify it. A lot of people um, are not sure what the Cambridge system is. So it's really straightforward. Um, when uh, we get a child in grade 8, we put them into a foundation, a foundation year. What, basically what that means is we prepare them to tackle something called the IGCSE, which is a grade 10 exam. So just like any other high school program, you do, you're in high school for five years. So in grade 8, you do the foundation year, and that basically ensures that you've got certain key concepts, especially in maths, but in uh, um, English and uh, the other core subjects as well, but especially maths. We want to make sure that you've got a platform, a solid platform to build on going into your next two years, which will prepare you for the IGCSE. That's in grade 10. In grade 9, you write internal exams. Then you have grade 10 and uh, 11 and 12. Gra at the end of grade 12, you write something called the AS exam. And that is a raft of subjects which you've chosen, which will uh, qualify you to go to university. So now, it's exactly like another school. You're in a standard and you move through year by year. You're in grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. The only difference is that our exams, our external exams, are set and marked in Cambridge, England. So, and um, they are internationally recognized. They are accepted by universities around the world. Um, we are well known, in, particularly well known in South Africa, to achieve that. Our, our, our students, our graduates are all around the country. They're at UCT, Stellenbosch, Tswane University of Technology. We have got uh, graduates from Rhodes all over the country. The university uh, admissions departments are very familiar with the Cambridge system. So up until now, um, Bay College, we've been running for 17 years, has been strictly focused almost entirely on academics. Um, we haven't had the numbers or the facilities to do uh, sports. Some enterprising parents have been have done things. For example, Johan Lutz runs a canoe club. Uh, Sean, our science teacher, uh, occasionally runs a soccer club. We have uh, students that are busy with all kinds of things from gymnastics, horse riding, uh, judo, karate, and so on and so forth. So the sport, we've left students to look after themselves. But as we move down to this new venue with its additional facilities, we are going to be offering a comprehensive sports program as well as a cultural program. So what we're looking at there is uh, soccer, netball, hockey. Um, we'll have mountain biking. There's a wonderful trail that will go. Uh, through Anton's farm and up the side of the mountain here and back here, we'll have canoeing. Um, there's a whole range, and almost limited, li limited this range of sporting opportunities. But we also want to do things like history and appreciation of music, ornithology, uh, film club, and so on and so forth, so that we've got a, got a cultural offering. Um, I, I've given this talk so often, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not sure what I might have missed out. So maybe what I should do now is, is, is open it to questions, and you probably find that your question is one that other people want answering as well. Is it, does anybody have any questions so far? Yeah, are you going to have music, um, like choir or yes. something, or something like that? Luke is going to do a choir. Um, at the moment, we, yeah, we've got a lot of students who are, are doing music, but they do it through the Fed Music Academy. Um, I know Tessa is the, uh, the primary school's music teacher and there will be an active music in school music program there. But at the moment, our students who do music do it through uh, individual teachers at PLIT, the PMA. Yeah, if I can add to that, we've got two part-time music teachers, Karen and Tessa, and we're going to see how we can utilize them throughout the school. And uh, I do intend to take the high school choir with David's permission. It's uh, something that I've done before and I love doing, so that'll, that'll be fun. Yeah. They're not very good at singing at the moment. <laughs> I'm not very good at conducting. <laughs> we, we, when it's a kid's birthday, we sing happy birthday, and it's, it's pretty excruciating. <laughs>
<laughs> if kids, sorry, if kids don't start in grade eight and they make the transition in grade nine or ten to your system is from a regular CAPS government system. That's a good possible? question. No, it is possible. Uh, obviously, the earlier it happens, the better. There are two, the, the two key problem subjects are maths and biology. So. Um, the maths at Cambridge is um, is challenging, but what makes the transition sometimes difficult is that the syllabus isn't done in exactly the same order as in the CAP system. So there is a cat, catch up program, uh, and we have in house extra lesson givers who try and uh, to effect that change. But the sooner it happens, the better. In Inside our school, we discourage students from taking maths on the AS level if they haven't got a B on the IGCSE level. That's how hard the AS level is. Um, so uh, you can quit maths at IGCSE grade 10, and you can write it at two levels there. Or if your maths is one of your strong points and you are uh, planning a um, a science or business direction, and you must have maths, then uh, obviously you've got to be hitting those numbers early on. And uh, you, if you come in at grade 10, for example, you, you are faced with, in one year, of writing the external exam. Now that's not, a, that's not a train smash, because that external exam result will be superseded by your grade 12 exam. But in order to really excel, at the, at the final stage, at grade 11 and grade 12, you need a solid foundation. So we really like kids to come in earlier, and if they don't come in earlier, then they've got to be really ambitious and uh, self-directed. They've got to know that it's a challenge and it's going to take um, a lot of dedication. Can I ask you, um, thinking, being mindful of emotional intelligence and everything else, in this regard, if someone's ready for a, their Cambridge exam, whichever one it may be, at a time, um, you know, if they're ready earlier than they would be, according to normal students, what is the actual approach with those guys that are ready earlier? Um, we, it's not something we, we encourage, actually. Okay. In the past, we have had students who've written early. So, for example, we had a matriculant who um, who finished before he was 16. Yes. It wasn't happy for him because he couldn't go to university. He sat around. It was a pain for his parents and so on and so forth. <laughs> but there are, there are other issues involved, uh, especially for maths and my subject, English. Um, you might be intellectually capable of writing those exams, but um, you are unlikely to excel. Because your ability to, for example, explore con uh, complex concepts uh, and to discuss them in a sophisticated way uh, might not really have been developed quite as far as is necessary for uh, to, to get the best marks that you can. So we, we we have had it in the past, but we really do discourage it. And it um, and and math particularly is a problem because it's a vertical system of knowledge, and it requires each step to have been um, really cemented before you go on to the next one. Can I ask you in the primary school then would you be then concentrating more on maths as a feeder to the high school? We will be liaising closely with the high schools okay. to what their requirements are. I mean we will produce, I uh, shouldn't say produce children, but our <laughs> grade 7 leaders, uh, our grade 7 learners who will be leaving grade 7 will be capable of going to any school, but we'll certainly be looking to keep them in Greenwood and um, knowing what they need to know to go into grade 8 for maths and for English and for everything. Yeah. With the vast facilities you have here, have you given thought to placement trip? Yes, in fact, next year we are going to be piloting A-levels. So three of our existing matric students, our AS students, are going to carry on. Uh, it's quite a, a reach for us because they won't be part of the, the morning's um, uh, program, so we'll be doing them in the afternoon. But they're such bright students, it's, it's, I think it's really stimulating for a teacher to, to have that challenge uh, in the afternoon. Um, you haven't ever had history at your school. Yeah. Why is that? Well, it's a tragedy because I'm a history, I, I majored in history. Uh, and I do see history as one of those really important subjects. 
We simply haven't had the demand for it. So none of our subjects, apart from the core subjects of English and Afrikaans and, and maths, are really that compulsory. You've got a fairly wide uh, freedom in, in, in choosing subjects. And we've had, on occasion, four students, our rule of thumb was four. If four students in a grade wanted to do a subject, we would provide a teacher. But we found that if you went with it, by the time you got to term two or three, uh, two or three of those kids had dropped out. So you were teaching one, paying for a teacher for one, one student, and it didn't work. The other thing about the Cambridge history is that it was it was a big subject. There's a real, it's, a, it's, it's the syllabus is vast. So you really, it's not a, a subject which you would encourage um, uh, an, uh, an average student. To, to tackle as, a, as something to fill up their, their raft of subjects. It's something that you have to be, uh, I think, pretty dedicated to do. But uh, going forward, we, we will be offering history. Not next year, but perhaps the year after. Um, we, the, the, this new setup will make that a possibility. And really, the way I address the absence of history in our, in our curriculum is every morning in assembly, as a small school, we don't have a lot of a, a notices and so on. So what I do is I try and give the students, we, when we meet for assembly, I try and give them an overview of important um, events. Um, so uh, anniversaries, um, significant moments in history, uh, bring them to their attention uh, in that uh, assembly. And will the, the primary school be following then? The primary school will continue to follow what we follow at the moment, which is based on CATS. CATS is the, um, <clears throat> that is what every, every school follows, that, that's what government schools follow. And all independent schools that I know of follow a system based on CAPS mixed with individual knowledge that uh, teachers bring to the system. So it's, it's a CAPS-based system, very, very standard system. And people ask, how will then they move into a Cambridge system? That's what's been happening at the moment. Children leaving Greenwood have gone to Bay from CAPS to Cambridge. So we would be... Um in our grade eight year, looking to uh, tool up kids from from any primary school. So we assume that um, you, you have been exposed to all the subjects, but uh, we get ready for IGCSE in that grade eight year. That, that is the, the tour. Um, we we we're not going to open all the bedrooms, but you'll get an idea if you went into the main building and go left or right. A couple of bedrooms open here that you've left open. You can see what is inside, that they've been left just as they were, as hotel rooms. So those will be classrooms, one will be a sick bay, one will be an office, the rest will be classrooms. Um, that's all primary school in the main building. And the smaller buildings you can see as you walk out here on your left. That's foundation phase, they've made a colorful wall there. And preschool, that's all, that's all happening that side. And I think that that's, that's all I can tell you. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to take further questions if there are. Any further questions? Yes. How are you going to segregate the smaller kids to the high school? Uh, I, don't, I don't see that as being a problem. I, I, I'll tell you why. I've come from another combined school in Mattel, which is grade triple naught to grade 12, which was really congested. <laughs> The high school is all upstairs. It was a long building with several different stories. The primary school is downstairs, and then the high school is all upstairs. There too, we ran separate timetables, separate breaks, and they they didn't mingle and they didn't want to mingle. And here we are much more ge geographically separated, and we'll be separated in time in terms of what we do with our daily routine. I just, I, I can't see any, uh, any issues there at all. We'll, we'll, we'll obviously monitor that, and if we need to shuffle things around, we will. But we'll, we'll be very aware of...